What are ILPs? And are they worth getting or should you avoid them? Let's get down to that. What is an investment link policy? ILP basically stands for investment link policies. They combine both investment and insurance in a single policy. There are two main types of ILPs. First, it's a regular premium ILP which have significant focus on insurance and single premium ILP which have a minimal insurance component. Today, I will explain about the regular ILPs. So sit tight. Let's start with the pros of ILPs. Firstly, as mentioned, ILPs let you get both insurance protection and investment opportunities together by purchasing just one policy. Your money in the policy will also be managed by your selected fund manager. You will not need to do too much work on your end when it comes to the investing and insuring part. This helps if you are not willing to put in the effort to invest due to various reasons such as time and knowledge and therefore insure separately on your own. Secondly, ILPs may be able to help you maintain financial discipline and accumulate wealth over time because they take a sum of your money every month to cover both investment and insurance aspects. For individuals with long-term investment horizons, ILPs offer the potential to accumulate significant wealth over time by consistently investing in market-driven funds policyholders can potentially grow their assets while maintaining life insurance. This means you have to be more financially responsible. Thirdly, you may get access to investment funds. Some ILPs give you the opportunity to assess exclusive funds at the lower upfront capital, which is usually hard to find in other plans. Some ILPs even provide free fund switching, which is quite rare, especially if you're doing your own direct investments. And lastly, the investment value generated over time is your money. Unlike a traditional whole life plan, any early withdrawals will be considered a loan and you'll be required to pay back. However, for an ILP, the investment value generated over time is yours and you're able to withdraw it in terms of emergency without the need of paying back the loan. Next, let's get on to the downsides of ILPs, which to be honest, there are quite a few. Firstly, ILPs often come with multiple layers of fees, including fund management fees, administration charges, and mortality costs. These fees can erode returns, especially over the long term. In the early years, a significant portion of premiums may go toward distribution costs such as commissions or marketing fees, leaving less money for actual investment. This means that the fund may take time to grow significantly. Number two, higher risk compared to traditional policies. ILPs expose policyholders to market volatility. The value of your investments in ILPs fluctuates with the performance of the underlying funds, which could result in financial losses. Unlike endowment plans or traditional whole life policies, there's no guaranteed cash value or returns. With that, ILPs do not offer guaranteed returns unlike some endowment or savings plans. The potential for investment growth depends entirely on how well the underlying funds perform. Poor market performance could result in lower than expected payouts at policy maturity. Imagine this, if the market is not performing well and is on a decline, and with many unit deducting riders, which essentially means riders attached to the ILPs that is charged to your investment value and constant withdrawals from the investment that you're entitled to do so all taking place at once, it will affect the overall value of the policy and any one of the above will result in why some might say that ILP will lose money if not properly managed. Thirdly, long-term commitment. ILPs are often long-term plans and exiting them early can result in hefty surrender charges, especially within the first few years. Partial withdrawals may also reduce the overall fund value, which impacts both the investment returns and insurance coverage. Number four, complexity. ILPs can be complicated to understand due to the combination of insurance and investment components. Managing both aspects require careful monitoring of the investment performance and an understanding of how fees impact your policy. So why do so many savvy investors hate ILPs? You may have heard of many savvy investors hating ILPs. This is likely because they have the knowledge on investing already and hence do not see the point of paying high commission rates for someone else to do it for them, especially when they cannot control what they are investing in. 
many savvy investors will probably prefer to invest and insure separately using separate tools that work better for each. That way, they can use their money on better investments to get better returns while getting insurance from a separate policy that works for them. Furthermore, savvy investors probably also realize that there are some unmentioned disadvantages of ILPs that insurance companies hide when encouraging others to buy an ILP. For instance, they may mention that ILP premiums are better because they remain the same even though the cost of insurance increases. However, they obviously do not tell you that this will only happen if your investment capital generates sufficient returns to afford the insurance cost. Some insurance companies will also use the fact that ILPs provide both insurance and investment opportunities as a plus. Hence, many savvy investors often hate ILPs because it may be the case that the insurance companies end up taking more of your money for themselves than leaving less for insurance coverage and investment opportunities, which may not even provide good returns anyways. Instead, these savvy investors find it more cost efficient to handle their own investments and find insurance in another policy. Well, should you get an ILP? So, it depends on how much effort you are willing to put in and your risk tolerance. If you are a savvy investor yourself or if you're an active trader or investor already doing direct investments, it's probably a better idea to stick with it so that you don't have to spend money paying for someone else to manage your investment and deal with high commission rates unless you're absolutely sure you can generate even higher returns. For those who are new to investing, if you are willing to put in the effort, it may be more worthwhile and less financially risky to invest in ETFs or RSS plans first while you learn how to self-invest. You will be able to grow your savings more safely and with more control while you build your knowledge on investments so that you can properly decide if an ILP is suited for you. At the end of the day, you might actually find investing on your own more enjoyable than letting someone else manage your investments like in ILPs. After all, there is always the strategy of buy term and invest rest, where you purchase a term life insurance which usually has lesser commitment, lower premiums, and higher insurance coverage than ILPs, and then use the remaining money to invest in what you choose be it ETFs or whatnot. This way, you have control in choosing investments that are cheaper than high expense ratio funds that most ILPs have. This is especially more suitable for people like fresh graduates with tighter budgets who are new to investing but still wish to grow their savings and have some insurance coverage. With all that being said, it takes a lot of time, effort, and trial and error to learn how to self-invest. If you're not willing to put in the effort to understand how investment works, and do not mind giving up the control to someone else who understands investments and insurance, then perhaps you may find ILP even more appealing. At the end of the day, there are always two sides of a coin. ILPs do provide insurance coverage and opportunities to grow your savings, and depends on your habits and interests, it may help you maintain financial discipline and even provide exclusive fund options that other policies do not. But ILPs do often carry more financial risk than the other policies like term insurance. So consider your options carefully. Research into the terms and conditions of an LP to see if an LP is suited for you or if you prefer to self-invest. But no matter what you choose or if you're really tight on budget, it's always advised to prioritize insurance over investing because there is always the unpredictability of facing medical emergencies that comes with hefty bills which may be too severe to recover from. On the other hand, if your investment journey is delayed, the consequences are less threatening. Perhaps you would just have to delay your retirement a little. Well, my name is Sean Tan and I hope that this video was helpful for you in some way. I will see you in the next one.